our scum and villainy uh, freewheeling space adventurers here uh, with the crew of the Cerberus. And uh, last time we dealt with the Cobalt Syndicate on Aleph, uh, trying to somehow manage their rather poor situation there. But we're on to further adventures now. And um, our job so to speak I, I suppose yeah it is a job you're freelancers in the purest sense of the word and you have a sort of fixer called Jezri who probably hangs quite a bit around uh, this system that you're in currently with the sector governor seat and everything uh, because they've got Jezri has ties to uh, well uh, by proxy to the government as well, but uh, Jesuit handles a lot of this sort of really semi legit, not quite a legit uh, trade, especially when it comes to exotic items. And one of those of great value is uh, various kinds of artifacts from times gone by, thousands of years ago. Uh, an ancient species that is now known either, uh, depending on who you talk to, it's, they're known as the Precursors or the Ur, you are. And uh, they have disappeared thousands of years ago from the galaxy and they have left a lot of ruins and detritus behind them. And the hegemony likes to contain all of that. They want to have control of things because the precursor relics that are around can be really, really dangerous. Uh, and not to the least because the precursors apparently had a vastly advanced understanding of physical reality as well as the way and its mysterious powers. So they quarantine and also just pack up and remove uh, precursor relics and sites as well uh, when they are discovered. However, Procyon sector, which we are in currently, is in the hinterlands of the galaxy. So uh, there's a lot to be discovered here as far as that goes. And Jezri does a brisk trade in, well, dealing in artifacts as well as other illicit things, but artifacts is a big thing because Jezri has for patrons, among others, the night speakers who are uh, a sort of mysterious group of mystics who have also some ties to the government and uh, Jezri deals with them quite a lot. And you benefit from this because Jezri is your friend and uh, Jezri has given you a job, which uh, it's a message that comes through. So there's the uh, holographic projector in your uh, ship's uh, cockpit, I presume, that spews out the spazzing image of Jezri. Uh, now, because Jezri is your friend, uh, tell me about Jezri. Is Jezri presumably human? old what's jezri like i like to imagine jezri's a, a, a probably a sort of early middle-aged human one of those sort of i suppose to use a modern sort of term maybe like i'm sorry you know like a market trader like it is it's almost like a sort of a middleman or woman mm -hmm. doesn't like directly like get their hands dirty a lot themselves but like mm -hmm. knows lots of people and can like put you in touch with the right people for like a cut, obviously. Yeah, so sort of like a broker type yeah, figure. Yeah, like a broker slash on the middle. Sweeney. Line. Yeah. So Jezri's image that spazzes from the faults in the projector uh, springs up and uh, you're given a brief. It's a recorded message, so there's nothing to talk to really. Uh, and it's standard for Jezri. Uh, Jezri is quite busy, so no time to chat. Uh, time is money. 
So the, the image of Jeffrey uh, speaks and says, uh, welcome Cerberus uh, to this briefing. Uh, once again, it has been a bit since the last, uh, but I hope that we can share some fine beverages uh, when you next come to Warren, hopefully having successfully completed the job that I'm about to propose to you. And uh, it concerns our good friends, the night speakers. Now, uh, night speaker Doran, uh, you might recognize the name. Uh, Doran is more or less the personal aide of the sector governor. Uh, Doran has informed me that there is a substantial reward in the offering and I've picked you for this job, which concerns a trip to Shimaya in the Breck system. Don't ask me how, but the night speakers have somehow predicted uh, the movements of a large, to my understanding, a very potent storm on the surface of that particular planet, which storms are a regular occurrence, nothing special there, but this one apparently is uh, momentous in some way that the night speakers have taken notice of. Well, the storm itself is not the point here. Apparently, the, the mere presence of the storm has revealed the location of a precursor ruin uh, to Doran somehow. And you are asked to go there, find this ruin, presumably in the storm, because apparently the storm is linked to the ruin, indicating its location somehow. Going there, apparently there should be a shrine of some kind. And within that shrine is apparently an immense but local network, uh, ostensibly a newosphere, uh, uh, an intangible, intense local network of data uh, in embedded in the precursor technology at the site. Now, uh, Doram has arranged that there is a precursor data core waiting for you in Ursia City, which you know to be the, the capital of, uh, of the planet planetary capital, you can pick up this precursor data core, you should take it to the shrine and activate it. And I am told that it should interface with whatever systems are present in the shrine. And Doram wants you to make sure that it interfaces with the systems and most importantly, aligns with it which I understood from Doran to mean that it is absorbing information of some kind. Uh, hyperspace lines and star maps might be involved. So it might take quite a bit of time. Navigational data is quite cumbersome. However, who knows? This is precursor technology. I do not know if it will just click and you're done or what. But please go there bring the precursor data core, get the data from the shrine and come back. That's the primary objective. Now, we can do a lot of things on the side and Doram has, well, uh, for reasons unknown to me, uh, promised quite a substantial reward for any precursor artifacts you might be able to scavenge from the site. I don't know what those might be, so that is up to you. Uh, but I suppose take what you can and bring it back and we will sort through it and see what I can fence for you and what we will sell to Doran. Of course, be as, well, avaricious as you wish, I suppose, as long as you complete the primary objective. 
which will gain both me and you uh, a payment from the nice speaker Duran. Duran, rather. Uh, and uh, there's a there's some figures popping up, uh, which you understand to be that the job itself is six cred worth. So just kind of like a basic standard run of the mill job. And then uh, if you want to bring in some extras, uh, there are some like per preliminary guesses uh, from uh, Jezri. So like things you bring back might be from one to two cred each, depending on what they are. And We'll, they will they will see what what it is yeah so just to clarify yeah the job is pick up this uh piece of technology yeah go and take it to the archaeological site yeah use it to copy the computers at the archaeological site get back out and nick anything else we can along the way yeah yeah quality i'm in no yep. ethical problems here from the doctor. <laughs> In, indeed not, Doctor. It seems like a fairly standard transport mission, but given the presence of the storm, I'm sure there will be sufficient dangers and hazards along the way. Uh, and what about these night fellas? What do we know about them? Have we had any dealings with them previously? Uh, I think that is entirely up to you. Uh, if you want to, you definitely could have. And if if so, then uh, I will tell you something. Also, if you wanted to, you can roll to gather information on them, if you want to. Obviously, then like I will your tell kind you more. Of thing, Viper. <laughs> Do you know anything about? They seem like a mystical order to me, so I don't know if I would. Well, you can look into them. Like you, you can do the footwork now. I can absolutely. I, I also wanted to know. I, I, I'd, guy... I'd also sorry for interrupting, Viper. I'd also like to be involved in this uh, footwork, as you call it. Uh, obviously, anything that can and I just a... need to grab my power cable back in. I see anything that can lead to a greater understanding of the way. I am obviously intensely interested in. I also wanted to know, yes, well, I'm looking at this guy. Uh -huh. uh, do I believe he's holding anything back? Like. Uh, the hologram? Yeah, like, do I feel like this is like he's making it out to be a milk run, but actually, you know, it's going to be anything but. Yeah. Uh... He's like, oh, the storms, you know, but the storms, it's no problem. Just go in and get the stuff. It'll be fine. Uh, well, uh, please feel free to roll something to figure them out. Okay. I'm guessing you want me to suggest what I'm going to roll. Yeah, well, it is uh... <laughs> It is always up to you, so. <laughs> um, I suppose, can I use Skulk to detect lies? No, Skulk is literally you skulking. <laughs> <laughs> I was reaching, but I thought I'd go for it. Um, <laughs> um, I'll go with swear then, just in conversational music, like overlooking. Yeah, there's, there's no. Well, yeah, I guess, I guess, yeah. There's no conversational activity, but however, if you want to, you can, I suppose, read into what what he's talking, uh, or how how the conversation is presented to you. Yeah, uh, it's not the optimal thing, uh, I would say. Because what you're doing is you're leveraging your ability to sway people to determine if someone's swaying you. Exactly. Exactly. I'll, yeah. <laughs> Swayception. Swayception. Sway detection. Yeah. Um, I think uh, it's it's going to be a, a. There's nothing here to really. Well, I guess yeah. Let's go with risky and uh, limited effect because it's. All right, really okay, hard. It's, it, it's a it's a spazzing hologram. So yeah. Okay, let's go for it. Oof. Nope. That is that is not. Oh, it's Did gone you? for like sixty seconds. What have you got yourself into? <laughs> He's just trying to figure out if the um, hologram message was sort of, I suppose, like did it include subterfuge? On yeah. like, it's, part. It's, it's, it's fine, like, Doctor. We're not, we've legit. not, we've yeah, not like pulled out the guns, Doctor, and we're not like <laughs> wrapping people. So <laughs> no reason to panic. Not yet. Yeah. So. Hmm. 
Yeah, I guess the consequence here is that your your limited effect drops to no effect. So yeah, don't know. You you, you go from yeah. having mm. little effect to having no effect at all. So can't figure it out from the hologram. Apart from these these night um, night speakers, night speakers, night um, you know arrays. I'm not entirely. You know, I just feel. I feel like. I don't have any evidence to back it up, but I just feel like there's is a certain undertone of like this is actually a lot more dangerous than they're making out. You know, these precursor things tend to uh, be very dangerous from from what I the limited knowledge I do possess. I'll be honest, it's more Zenith's forte. You know me, I'm all in for a bit of a risky ride. Well, whilst uh, Viper's uh, studying the hologram, I would like to, using like, publicly available information sources, mm -hmm. the net, etc., I would like to, if possible, roll study to see what I can gain yeah. from public knowledge Definitely. about the, um, the night speakers. Yes. Do you want to make the roll, John, since you're the more knowledgeable in this area? Well, I would be if I was using a tune, but I'm using study, which I have one dot in. Okay. Is this a risky position, or...? Mm, I think this is probably controlled, because you're just literally looking yeah. stuff up on the net, so... I need a three. Oh. Three, okay. Mm. Mm hmm. <clears throat> okay, so uh, let's have, well, obviously, uh, also, just to clarify, Wiper, you can resist the consequence if you want to. Uh, and you can bump your effect in your failed hologram thing to limit it if you uh, resist the consequence for two stress. Or however many, sorry, however many the resistance roll taxes you. Same here with Zenith. Uh, you, you can resist the consequence that I'm about to talk to as soon as I, we figure out the Viper situation. Okay. Uh, this is for the, the role with the hologram. Yeah, yeah, trying to figure out the hologram. Like, if you want to have a little something at least, uh, you can roll a resistance uh, with, you know, I think, Resolve, I, probably. I'm actually all or, right about it. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, okay. It was more like, this is instinctual. Mm -hmm. Sort of my senses thinking well, this job seems a little too easy but i don't have any reason to push if, if that makes sense it's more mm -hmm. yep. i just want to see what i could get at that stage yep. no doubt this is obviously the key piece of information that would totally change the entire operation mm -hmm. you tell us that there's like cybernetic <laughs> death crabs in this place <laughs> <laughs> so zenith i think we're going to um go for basically the same consequence so Standard effect to limited, so you'll get something, but it's not going to be a lot unless you resist the consequence. And r remind me what you roll for resisting. Uh, you roll one of the three attributes, I think, inside prowess resolve, and I think it's probably going to be inside. Yeah. In this case. Yeah, why not? I'll give it a go. And it's the cost is six stress minus whatever you roll as your highest. Let's give it a go. So five stress. Yep. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so the night speakers are they're they're mystics as you already knew, uh, and they have dark proclivities, and they are looking specifically for precursor artifacts. And these, as as you already know, uh, they tend to be quite dangerous. And and the night speakers are looking for, I suppose, the information that you find on your trawl through the nets is that they look for especially obscure and dangerous ones. And they are quite few in number. They are an initiatory order, so you need to get in with someone and make good with them, and then they can initiate you to their order, and then you can start learning their secrets and whatnot. So about the inner workings, almost nothing is known because of the nature of the order and they don't really advertise. Uh, so this this is all basically secondhand knowledge that you find. And um, yeah, Doram is uh, 
already mentioned by Jezri. Uh, Doram is apparently their leader and uh, also the sector governor's uh, personal mystic and advisor, basically the court wizard. Uh, and uh, apparently, at least to some degree, Doram is influencing the sector governor to also gather precursor uh, artifacts, uh, which is not strictly legal. Uh, like possession of dangerous artifacts is not good. It is not legal. They should be uh, quarantined and uh, secluded away by the hegemony, the authorities. Or and, sold to the highest bid. Yeah, or, or that. And uh, the highest authority in the system is trying to collect them. Uh, uh, partly, at least, to the influence uh, because of the influence of Duran, and uh, they're not good friends with the Church of the Stellar Flame for obvious reasons. The, the Church of the Stellar Flame doesn't like artifacts. They don't like people who meddle with the way, and the Night Speakers do both. So uh, they don't uh, like the Night Speakers. Sound like my kind of people. <laughs> yeah. My kind of guys. Uh, the Night Speakers all wear masks. There are different kinds of masks for each, but they all have them. And uh, you find some pictures of, especially Doram, because he's about, uh, in the court at least. Uh, they all have pitch black eyes. Uh, and you find some scraps of sort of their mysticism, which uh, deals with something called the night voice. Night voice. Yeah, but like specifics are entirely absent. It's just like people speculating on mystic forms <laughs> about this stuff. Uh, but yeah, they seem to be uh, allied with um, uh, with the sector governor's house, so they would be allied with the house Malclaith. And uh, yeah, uh, mysterious mystics uh, with masks and ties to the government, and they want artifacts. Sound like my kind of guys. Guys. <laughs> it also sounds like we're going to be in competition with them to get this stuff. Well, you're not about I'm thinking, oh, well, no, that's that. I believe they're the ones who are sort of asking us to locate stuff. So I'm thinking, oh, this could be like a foot in the door for me if they're like, oh, mysterious mask-wearing mystics, you have to get a bit of it in with them. Is that correct, Johannes? Sorry, I thought we were getting them for our friend and he was telling us that these other guys were trying to get there as well. Uh, your friend Jezri uh, mentioned mm -hmm. that Doram, the night speaker, has given Jezri this task. Like, right, okay, so sorry, like, I misunderstood. Yeah, yeah, no, Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, so Jezri is good with the Night Speakers, and as a result, you are as well. And the Night Speakers gave this to Jezri, Jezri gives it to you. And uh, if you do the thing, if you take the data core to the shrine, have it align itself with the local systems, bring it back, uh, Duram is going to pay you. Okay. Ace. So, yeah, so that's what you learn about the Night Speakers. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm glad I got that five stress for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you've been doing really good with the resistance rolls up until now. That was the first really big hit from one of those. I, I was going to say, at least we now know we can we can use like gambits for our special powers. We're going to use stress for them all the yeah. time. So. <laughs> yeah. That, that, yeah. That, that, just, just let me hold on to that. <laughs> yeah. Just let me hold on to the gambits. Okay. So guys, what is your plan? Uh, we're going to, you're in uh, the governmental uh, system now. It's going to be a couple of jumps away uh, where you need to go. But you know what you need to do. It's go pick up the um, uh, data core and then get to wherever this uh, place is. And it's supposed to be uh, shown, the way is supposed to be like shown by this massive storm. Uh, in there I, i'm seeing it as check. A... we can land our ship can't we yeah yeah, yeah. I, I'm how are we for flying in a storm folks because i know i haven't got much pilot skill so that's what we've got viper for he's the man with the stick 
any storm any day. That's it. And the, the way I'm seeing it will probably be, you know, when we make the plan, it will presumably be a transport plan because we're literally picking this up, taking it to a place through hazardous circumstances. That's pretty much the textbook definition of a, um, a transport mission. That is one option. You can also look at them as, like, you can include a bunch of other shit along with your choice of plan. So I'm thinking if you wanted to, you could use maybe a, a deceit or even a social plan to ingratiate yourself in a crew of um, scavengers, basically. And just to uh, remind us of what's going on on Shimaya. So that's the desert planet that we started on. Uh, so a bunch of mining uh, of valuable um, ores exposed by these big storms that blow the sand away. However, uh, the storms are also highly uh, charged, so there's a lot of lightning. And uh, sometimes the lightning comes down real hard. It turns the sand into glass, yeah. and you, you get both access and you can see stuff underneath. Uh, and uh, whenever there's a storm, there's going to be storm chasers going out looking for like oh is there going to be like what is the storm going to expose so you could like get in with like one of those grooves if you wanted to like have a different plan instead of like going in yourselves you could join a scavenger gang and head out i don't know i can't i can't tell greatly zenith's greatly desirous of like hooking up with some other people and potentially having to like share the wealth or shank them in the desert Mo people, mo problems. Exactly. Yeah. It just seems like additional complications to me. Yep. Now, don't get me wrong. If we're going into like, if we knew we were going into like a fight or something, extra bodies is all useful. But since it's like it's nature, we're going to be trying to get around. And if we get struck by lightning, I don't think having a few extra bots is going to really help us out. What? technology might we be able to access that might be able to help us with that whole storm thing i mean I, i'm thinking like sticking an earthing rod near to where we're working at the minute but there's got to be something better than that well the ship is obviously going to be there so <laughs> like if, 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 the, if you bring in the ship that's going to be a big draw Is that going to be a problem for the ship? Only if we get struck by the lightning. Um, it may not enjoy it. But, uh... I have every confidence in Viper. Every confidence. <laughs> I don't think I've ever drawn through a precursor storm before. Yeah. The storm itself isn't actually precursor as far as I understand, since how would the how would the Ur have left a storm there? Now, obviously, the storm might be caused by a precursor artifact, but the storm itself is a is a unique weather phenomenon. Is there any info we can get about the storm itself? Uh, yeah, it's it's all freely available. Uh, the storms on Shimaya are range from. Ah, it's a bit windy to its extremely like brutal combination of a massive like shamal sandstorm wind so like, when it gets bad it gets really really bad with no visibility and lightning coming down that turns <laughs> sand into glass so, I mean, as far as I can see, we collect the data core, we transport it to where the storm is, potentially, like, park the the ship a safe distance away. Then we travel across the land to where the, the, the eye of the storm is, if you want to call it that. And we take the data core with us. Yeah, let's get some use out of those dirt bikes. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Okay. Good. Make sure we've got some reasonably good gear for like face covering through sandstorms. Yep. 
All righty then. So we are using plan. Let's get, where are we? There we go, engagement. So your plan is transport. Okay, so we know what you're gonna do. Uh, we know the uh, things you're going to utilize, which is the ship and uh, then your hover bikes, is it? Yeah, the space hogs. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Obviously, we get get the tires changed to like sun tires or whatever the equivalent is. Yeah, yeah, no, it's it's hover. Oh, it's, oh, it's, so, ho oh, it's hover yeah. hogs. Is it? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Unless you specifically want them to go on ground, that's fine that's as well. That's fine by me. Yeah. I, I was guess kind of picturing like the speeder bikes from uh, Jedi. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty much what they'd be if they're hover bikes. They've just got the handlebars a bit higher. Yeah. Yeah. And that's that's literally the only like, it's it's not more powerful. They just had the like, mods to, uh, yeah. to stick the bars higher. Yeah, um, good. So uh, please choose your loadouts. So uh, light, medium, or heavy load as we go in. I think in this instance, there's not any reason for us not to go with a heavy loadout because the disadvantage normally is like it's well obvious you're carrying loads yep. of gear, but we're on a desert planet exploring like some ruins of course we're carrying mm -hmm. lots of gear yep. so I, exactly. I think i think we may as well just take the heavy load out yep. well cumbersome is a heavy load i mean are we talking like a backpack and our pockets full or are we talking something that's actually going to weigh us down uh it's it's more like uh you look like the mandalorian going in to murder like a couple of bars full of goons quality yeah, let's go for the heavy load. Yep. That Boom. makes all the sense in the galaxy. Yeah, I mean, like I say, if, if, any, if anyone, like, see... I'm sure no one's going to be surprised if they see us, like, trudging across the desert towards some ancient ruins that were, like, stacked full of kit. Yep. Splendid. It's 8 o'clock on Thursday night. It's time to clap for the NHS. It's a bit weird and culty. <laughs> Speaking we just of... buy him some PPE instead. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I know. Just waiting for Matthew to come back. Um, one of the things that, speaking of like these uh, regular happenings on like a national level uh, at certain points of time, in Finland, we um, we test our air raid sirens every Monday, twelve o'clock. It's just a. That's weird. Yeah, it's a. Uh, are, are you expecting an air raid in Finland? It is entirely about being ready, and uh, yeah, our infrastructure is kind of geared towards like let's make sure that like we're good to go like regardless like we, finland has chosen heavy load <laughs> is <laughs> what i'm saying why you're doing better in the current situation <laughs> like, yeah. but yeah it's it's one of those things where uh it like it ranges from like someone coming in uh to a country and being like that's weird like they they blare the goddamn horns like every monday like, what's that about and then it goes on to like the other extreme where like someone might come from either like just recently having been in a war zone or something or have having history of that in their home country or whatever they come here and they get like traumatized by the fact that it's like suddenly like the air horns come on and it's like what the shit <laughs> what the actual fuck because they're used to it actually meaning that oh no now you need to get underground because it's it's the bad times. That, that was pretty scary thinking about it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which to me, because I've grown up here, so I don't, I barely register it when it says, oh, it's 12 o'clock on Monday because it's boo. But someone might think that it's actually like danger, Will the Robinson, like you're going to fucking die. Okay, well, s since we've got Matthew yeah. back, I think um, Viper should be the one to make the um, the role for the mission. Yes, since so he, Viper. He's the pilot. Viper, we're doing engagement role here. So, is this operation particularly bold or daring? 
I, I don't maybe not yeah uh, no, I, I, I don't it, know i mean that i mean we, we are, we, it, yeah i mean we are flying through through some like giant like lightning storm that can turn sand to glass so fairly daring yeah. mm-hmm. is it overly complex or contingent on many factors yeah so we're at two does the plan expose a vulnerability of the target or hit when yeah no not really because it, it's kind of the opposite actually <laughs> Um, and that's what we're going to go next to. Uh, is the target strongest against this approach, or do they have particular defenses? Yeah, the storm. <laughs> the storm itself. So back to one. Uh, can any of your friends or contacts provide aid or insight? Yes, Jezreel already has two. Um, any enemies or rivals interfering? Um, any other things to consider? Well, uh, no. we we have potentially got the um, the data core and the knowledge that the storm's supposed to like with this data core is supposed to like pinpoint the um... yeah where to go yeah so we, we've got like an exact like, location yeah it's more about that you know where because the, the storm is going to be big but you know where it is like in the general area so maybe not exactly because you don't know you don't have the coordinates where to go so. Um, we're at two, is it? Yeah. Uh, so, Matthew, uh, please roll. Uh, if there's an engagement roll button on your sheet, please click that. Roll two I dice. Have a look. Okay. I don't think I've done an engagement roll before on this sheet. Okay. Okay. Let's go. Come on. Come, come here. Engagement roll. Did you guys have an engagement on your sheet? Actually, just roll a fortune roll. Cause... Yeah, so I think we used fortune previously. Fortune, yeah. right, cool. Yeah. Number of dice, two. Oh, yeah. All your plans are great. Do, do, do we get a gambit for that? Uh, yes. I believe Sweet. so. Sweet. See, I told you, I had every confidence in Viper's abilities. Look at that sexy little second space arm in there. Mm -hmm. So, good result. You're in a controlled position when the action starts, <laughs> which is which is good because you're flying into the storm. So, uh, we're fast forward. You've picked up. Uh, you've picked up the uh, data core, the precursor. Uh, artifact on its own uh, from the capital planetary capital city and you're flying to where you know from the local data nets that there's this giant storm brewing out in the desert so you're flying there and um, it's very good for you uh, that you're in a controlled position because you you're flying towards the storm and as you start to get into the storm uh, your, uh, well, I suppose like system drives, so not the jump drive, but the system drives, uh, they short out as per our engagement, uh, sorry, the entanglement role from last time. So your, your like sublight drives go out and Viper does a very controlled uh, crash landing, but it's still a crash landing. <laughs> so you, uh, you plummet down, you smash into and skate along the dunes for quite a while because you had great speed. And um, there's no additional damage to that. It's just the drives are now down. You, uh, It was in atmosphere, so you had... Uh, uh, like, if this had happened in space and you flew into a, an asteroid, you would be done. <laughs> but uh, it was uh, in atmosphere, so your speed wasn't that great. So you're good. The bottom of your ship is scraped like there's no paint at all there now but um it's fine the hull integrity is good but you can see from all your uh, diagnostic systems that the drives need repairing or like juicing to at least get them going somewhat but they're not gonna lift you up without an effort so you're getting into the storm and you have your hover bikes uh ready to go which you can do. 
Yeah, so b- b- we barely even stopped when I'll be sort of like heading to heading to where we've got the bikes and being like, right, let's get the day to call. Let's get out there. Let's find this. Uh, let's find this temple. And as I'm saying that, I'm going to be trying because I believe this is obviously the Stormers vibe. I said it's connected with the precursor tech which mm-hmm. often involves the way I'm going to be trying to attune myself to like the flow of the way in the area to see if I can help pinpoint like the exact location. That is good. Uh, and what you're doing is you're engaging with a clock that I'm going to put visible now on to roll 20. Oh, I've not got a great record where these things are concerned. Yeah. So uh, it's a four segment clock of you navigating the storm to get to where you need to go. And you're doing exactly that. You're you're trying to attune to the if the storm is somehow way infused, uh, yeah. great. Uh, or if you can somehow pinpoint where this uh, supposed precursor uh, way line temple is. Uh, then, yeah. I mean, I'm hoping that the the data core will like, help us as well, but maybe not. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't do that. It's it's um. It's as far as you understand, it is geared to interface with the uh, sort of data systems at the at the shrine, this temple, and it's not. It doesn't do anything else, or at least you don't know how to do anything else with it. More USB stick than yeah. iPhone, yeah. Yeah. In, yeah. in which case, I'm going to tick one of my load to take out my own precursor artifact, my um, mm-hmm. my sword, and I'm going to try and use that to like help me channel the mm-hmm. way and sort of almost like meditating on it as I as I'm sort of like open the door in this storm's like, mm-hmm. like whipping past with like lightning crashing down. I'm gonna try and calm my mind, focus on the blade and sort of like let the way flow through me. Mm-hmm. I like to imagine that you take out the the hilt and then have it levitate in your hand and then have it spin like yeah, a so. Yeah. And then uh, point towards where you need to go or something like that. Um, okay, cool. So uh, roll your uh, attune, and uh, I think because uh, it's a it's a f- precursor relic, so that will get you plus one. Uh, okay, I'm assuming that's that. a risky position. Oh yeah, yeah, no. Oh yeah, let's. Um, yeah, it's a it's a risky position, and let's go with great effect okay. uh, if you get this. And I'm going to bonus dice for the precursor. Yeah, no, I, w- I was thinking that it's, instead of the bonus dice, it's going to be a great effect. All oh, right, okay, so, so no bonus yeah. dice, okay. Yeah, yeah. however, uh, you can spend two stress to get, <laughs> to get a, an extra die or get a devil's bargain and get an extra die. Can, can I spend one of our gambits? Yes. Splendid, I'll do that then instead. Good. Look at that, and I've rolled a six. Yeah, so you... Uh, let me toggle this thing, if I can do it. Uh, almost. There we go. So you take out your a distinctly, illegally distinct uh, plasma blade hilt uh, out and le- meditate with it. It spins in your hand, and it starts pointing you the way, and uh, you... You know where to go, and I presume everyone gets on their hover bikes, and we so yeah. So scream. A, a, as I've finished like with it spinning around, as I sort of like fix the location in my mind, I sort of reach out and grab hold of the blade and took it back into my robes, and then I'm going to shout for everyone like, get get your gear, get your packs, get get your bikes ready. I, I know the way to go, and then I jump on my own and be like, mm. Mm. yeah. So. It's going to be the three of you screaming off into the storm. And uh, yeah, you get quite close to the center of the storm. Who would like to contribute the rest of the way? Zenith is already navigating you there. Does anyone else have anything they would uh, want to contribute? Because we have one more segment before we're done. We're not there yet. Is there any way I can set us up with some like, I don't know, uh, visors 
dust masks, things that will make it easier mm. for us to navigate, like, short distance, see each other. Yeah. Because obviously if we lose track of Zenith in the storm, the other two of us are both screwed. Mm-hmm. Um, making sure we've got things like lights with us so we can signal each other if we can't hear each other. Making sure we've got radios mm-hmm. and some means to like track each other and work out where the ship is if we get disorientated. Might yep. I recommend that we all you tick the one dot communicator on our equipment? Sounds good. Yep. That sounds great. Um, so what are we rolling to set up the communications network? The the That it would be a non-issue regularly. However, you're in a storm with a heavy electrical charge. So that might be a problem. That sounds like a disaster type situation. The sort of stuff that a doctor might be experienced in like dealing with communications then maybe Uh, are are, are we talking doctor yeah if if you let me surely you you can say damn it jim i'm I'm a doctor not a disaster planner that's true (laughs) yeah jim i am yeah (laughs) yeah you you could do that yeah all right so (laughs) yeah go ahead give us a cheers love i'd forgotten i got that pal (laughs) All is revealed in the way. Yeah, two dice. Yep. Uh, do you want... Four, yeah? Sorry? So a one and a four, that's a four is the result, correct? Uh, yes, yes, yes. So let's see. So it was a risky roll. Uh, you do it, but there's a consequence. Uh, you suffer mm-hmm. harm, there's a uh, complication occurs, uh, you have reduced effect, or you end up in a desperate position. You could roll and to I, resist it, though. Yeah, so, I yeah, you can... roll to resist it. Yeah, so, the let, let me... Nice. Uh, let me tell you what it is before you okay. decide whether or not you want to do that. So, uh, let's say... Hmm, let's, th- let's say the storm is going to intensify... Uh, so that when you get there, uh, things are going to be desperate. So when you arrive at wherever your zenith is leading you, uh, the storm will have escalated to the point that things are desperate. Now I definitely want to roll to resist. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So, so you what, you use one, one of I... your you use one of your three uh, I forget what they're called, but your insight, prowess, or resolve. And, uh, I, yeah, I think this is inside because it's the doctor thing. Yeah. So yeah. two dice. Two dice. Yep. Three. Yep. So that costs you three uh, stress. Yeah. So you are not slowed down. Uh, instead, you are quite sped up, uh, thanks to Mushishi's uh, comms network setup, uh, which allows you to somehow pierce the intense uh, storm that you find yourselves in. And you find yourselves in more or less the eye of the storm. Uh, So that is good. Uh, So you reach where you're going. And where you're going is this field where uh, intense lightning strikes, even as you howl in with your uh, hover bikes, there's a lightning flash that comes down that momentarily blinds you that leaves behind this glass sculpture almost where the uh, lightning came down, melting the sand and also splashing it around and also vertically up. So there's these like, it's almost like glass spikes and like sculptures uh, that are formed from this intense lightning strikes. I, I like to think, whereas normally Zenith, like previously Zenith, might have like slowed down and you know, sort of trying to work out a way around it. Like now, he's just literally like, I know where we need to go. I'm going for it. Almost like he's obsessed. <laughs> he's, he's literally like the Spreakers are artifacts. That's mm-hmm. where I'm going. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. So Zenith leads you through this um, this field of 
melted sand and glass sculptures uh, to a place where there's apparently quite a lot of lightning strikes have happened. Uh, there's a lot of broken and shattered, uh, melted sand glass everywhere. And uh, you can see a, a place where a lot of the sand has been blown away. There's uh, like patches of glass here and there. And there's also clearly like manufactured uh, stone artifice. And uh, uh, you can see that there's a glass sheen on top of what looks like an entrance underground. So basically like sandstone colored uh, stone steps under this sheet of glass reeled by these uh, occasional flashes of the uh, lightning. Okay, um, as we, so I presume the glass isn't like entirely transparent. Yeah, not entirely, no. It's so na natural after all. So as we sort of like pull our hover bikes to a stop and get off, uh, I'm going to like look at the, the glass that's over the entrance and based on like how murky stuff looks below it, can I just roughly how deep, like how thick the, the glass sheet is? Uh, you think it's probably like this, this thick maybe. Okay. Like maybe 30, 40 centimeters thereabouts. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to try and do is I'm going to put my um, my plasma blade against mm -hmm. it. I'm going to try and like ignite the plasma blade with the hilt sort of like held mm -hmm. down against it and see if like the plasma blade goes through it. Yeah, it does. It just uh, it, it glows orange instantly and starts dripping down around your plasma. Yeah, so I'm going to go yeah. and basically carve out so, a big circle and knock it through. Yeah, you knock it through. Uh, it, it, it glows uh, in the aftermath and uh, you have to wait a while in the howling winds as the unless you want to dive in. <laughs> Uh, oh, that, that, that'd be a very reckless thing. To, yeah, I'm, I'm straight in. <laughs> so you go in and um, uh, dodging the driplets of <laughs> melted glass and you find yourselves in... Let's see. Where are my notes? Here. Okay. So You find yourselves in this precursor wayline temple underground, so it's quite dark. However, you have your kit. So if you have, I don't know if there's like light stuff on the list. I'm probably just like keeping my plasma blade ignited and yeah. holding that up. Yeah, that does help. So it's uh, an underground facility made from mostly of this sandstone looking stone material and the complex looks mostly collapsed. Like there's multiple um, corridors, which is just, it's filled with rock and sand. However, if you figure out that there's all these collapse or unusable uh, corridors, it's quite sprawling indeed. However, now it's not that accessible at the moment. So it's a mostly collapsed uh, complex of dust and sand choke corridors. And you also come upon several small antechambers. In these antechambers, you usually find at least one metallic sculpture of, uh, it's a very stylized sculpture. So not uh, so like sort of photorealistic at all, stylized uh, sculptures of these gaunt xeno humanoids uh, which, which uh, uh, glitter in the light of your plasma blade. Uh, they seem to be holding their hands up like this. Uh... Okay, so I I look at the others. Um, presumably, it's a bit quieter in here because we're out. Of yeah, the, yeah. The it, it, yeah. You you can hear the like the distant like. My my, my voice lowers almost to a whisper because we are in like a holy place that's obviously steeped in the way. So regardless of who made it, it it's still worthy of respect. And I'll say, 
I think we should all stick close. After all, there may have been mechanisms that left behind to protect this place. And so I'm holding up my plasma blade so we can see by the flickering light. I say, let, let's start exploring, see if we can find this, uh, where we need to use this data call. Yep. Carefully though, yeah. So you head in, uh, guided by Zenith's uh, plasma blade, and yeah, it, it takes a while to travel around. There's a whole bunch of dead ends uh, that you have to turn back from. However, you end up in what you presume to be the shrine, uh, this larger hall, which has a uh, at the back. Uh, it looks like there's there's a couple of uh, very worn bits of cloth. Basically, it's just like strips of cloth anymore, just hanging from the ceiling. It looks like there's a bit of a, a devotional altar, maybe, and a couple of large, uh, like, waist-up uh, stone sculptures of the same kind of gaunt Zeno that you saw in the metallic statues before. Uh, and they have their hands up like the statues did. However, their eyes uh, are uh, inset with uh, several crystals that sort of glitter in the dark. And um, in the middle of this shrine, you uh, e even before you brought the plasma blade fully into the room the hall there's faint outlines of so some kind of maybe a holographic system it's uh it's it's almost as if someone had turned uh the sort of transparency filter like all the way up but there's a very obviously there's uh something in the air and by something i mean some some kind of uh, projections uh, of very advanced computer systems. Okay, now we were told, cor correct me if I'm wrong, yep. we were told that if we sort of like turned the data core on in the right place, it would try and like interface. Yep. So yep. Um, I I'm going to, Viper and Mushishi, which one of you guys was carrying the data core? I'll carry it if you want. Okay, so in the still with a hushed voice, I, I turn to Viper and I say, uh, "Viper, this seems like it might be the place. So uh, observe the the sort of faded holograms. Uh, I think mm -hmm. you should activate the data call." Okay. Watch my uh, watch my six. Of course, and I'll sort of <laughs> hold my plasma blade, and I'll I'll sort of move. So I'm almost so we're all like back to back, sort of looking around. So. Like, we covered 360. Yep. So Viper, give us a roll. What are you doing to activate the the data core? So all I've got to do essentially is just go up and place it on there. That's it. Uh, yeah, uh, that was the orders. Seems simple enough. However, it is a very complex piece of precursor tech, so uh, I suppose I'll use my extremely good uh, <laughs> uh, helm skill to carefully <laughs> and you're piloting the data core. Is yeah, that it? In, into the deck flies it across the room, <laughs> dexterously putting it in place. You know, like smooth transition. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> okay, yeah, because in in this game you can decide. How badly your shit goes. So, uh, yeah, please helm this thing. <laughs> okay, no problem. Would you say this is a risky maneuver? Is it, dangerous? Uh, it is desperate <laughs> with little effect. Oh, oh, of limited effect. Yes, on that, yeah. Okay. Is there any way I can assist him with the placement via my attunement to the way? You can suffer one stress and give Viper an additional die. There you go, have a nice redox. Please do. Uh, th thank, thank God for you, John. 
Yep. So uh, Viper, please put down uh, an XP because of the desperate roll. That goes in the in the uh, yeah, yeah, pr in the prowess. Yeah. Prowess, is it? Yeah. And I helmed my way through that situation. Hold on, everybody. Hold on. Oh, let me get that. Oh, there we go. Okay, so you do it, but there's a consequence. Uh, you suffer severe harm or serious complication occurs. And the serious complication is uh, there's going to be an arrival at the scene because this storm has drawn other eyes aside from yours as well. Uh, and you can resist that if you want. I will try to resist it. Uh, you always succeed, but it's just a matter of how much stress does it cost you. Okay. So you roll. What do you resist it with? What, what's your how? how My do natural you... good looks. Um... <laughs> so someone's is drawing the attention of someone. Yeah, your your handling of this thing will ping on someone's radar. So you have to pick your insight, prowess, or resolve. Um, I'm going to go in no prowess. I'm going to go prowess. Okay. No, so resolve. We're resolve, sorry. Resolve, I have to go. Resolve. resolve. Yep. Good. Okay. Here we go. Click it. Yeah. Okay. So four stress. I uh, yes. All right. So you, uh, where do you put it? The stress in the box, man. Uh, no. The goddamn artifact <laughs> um oh do i have a uh i don't have any in the usb port man yeah but did you put it in the right way the first time i bet not not with that roll <laughs> i'm gonna hide it upon myself okay so you so you put it on and then you put it in your coat pocket <laughs> pretty much <laughs> okay so you you activate it and it, you put it in your coat pocket, and it uh, sort of lifts out of your coat pocket. <laughs> um, um, Zenith, I may need your. Uh, um, starting to get beyond my peer grade. What? Uh, uh, what, what sort of? Ho what sort of? Ho I presume it's hovering. Yeah, it, it lifts out of his coat pocket, and it moves towards the center of the hall, uh, from where um, a sort of uh, a small stone dais is rising from the floor and from within the center of the dais uh a, like a, a very tiny uh pedestal is like a like a shaft basically a stone shaft rises from the middle of the dais and uh there's a a sort of like socket on top and this this uh like like fist sized device uh floats gently towards this socket device that had risen from the floor i think it's doing exactly what it's supposed to be viper i suggest we follow it just make sure that it's uh undisturbed when it does whatever it's doing um okay uh, i draw a blaster yep so you draw a blaster as this uh data core settles into the socket mm -hmm. and uh, there's a gentle hum that goes through the entire complex and um there's some uh sand that drops from the ceiling as a result and uh, several pieces of like tactile holographic uh, systems spring out from uh, where the shaft uh, is in the middle of the hall so there's uh, like, uh, like holographic screens that come to light just hovering in the air and uh, like a plethora of to you so far indecipherable data is is streaming across and the data core is uh blinking uh this like soft blue light good so you have activated successfully and uh it seems to be doing the thing um, so now would be the time to look around for anything else about the shit out of the place yeah. <laughs> so 
knowing how Zenith feels about this place, I'm going to ask Zenith if there's anything that he thinks ought to be liberated before the temple is looted by other people. Yes, I see your point, Excellent Doctor. Uh, I believe that anything that can enhance our knowledge of the way or our knowledge of these precursor artefacts should be removed from here so that it can be studied properly. However, I'm going to ask that you allow me to, while the two of you explore, that you allow me to remain here, since, as you may be aware, I've been attempting to study the, the flows of the way within myself for some time. But I appear to have hit a, a bit of a wall in my understanding, one that I fear can only be overcome by studying at the feet of someone or something I say gesturing at the artefact and the pedestal and the surroundings that has far greater knowledge of the way than myself. I can think of no better surroundings for me to meditate on the way than these. But I agree the two of you should explore and see what else can be liberated from this place. Is there anything you particularly want us to look out for or want us to avoid taking? It is difficult to say. I don't have any great knowledge of these Ur or their kind. Uh, you will have to use your best judgment. I, I trust the both of you to to use your discretion. And then I'm going to sort of sit down like cross-legged in that like Jedi meditation pose, like pl plasma blade hilt like across my knee, and I'm going to be observing the the sort of moving like holographic patterns and stuff like that, and trying to sort of meditate on them and continue furthering my knowledge of the way by examining these creatures who are obviously like masters at it by examining even the faded remnants of their work probably contain more knowledge than we have so Mushishi and Viper what to do anything that looks like a cool bike or uh, <laughs> ship or anything like that that's, that's <laughs> the thing I would look awesome drugs some, like, uh, you you like have great bikes things. outside. Yeah, but precursor upgrades. No, those are in another castle, unfortunately. You don't see a chop shop. <laughs> <laughs> However, uh, as you look around, uh, there's this. Uh, apparently, it's it's there's some kind of a data system in the middle of this particular hall. There's the uh, devotional uh, altar at the back with some cloth scraps and uh, two statues with the crystal eyes and um, you can see even further back uh, there's something that looks kind of like maybe shelves on a wall I'll advise the two how of you big like... are those statues uh, they're pretty massive uh, but they're from uh, like waist up so basically, it's just torso statues on either side of the uh, altar. And I'd say, let's say there are like four meters uh, diameter. So too big to strap to a hover bike. Yeah, maybe not the whole thing. Uh, it, it's not. Yeah, I know the maybe. eyes in the statues look like they're probably quite shiny, but mm -hmm. I don't really want to trash the statues like right in front of the Jedi. I don't really want to trash the statues at all, to be honest. We're getting quite well paid mi to just go into the USB stick Please, back. Please, mi Mystic. <laughs> yeah, he I'm doesn't need to get sued. stop Viper taking the heads off those statues because the eyes do look quite valuable. Obviously, I'll tell the two of you, if you do need to like, consult me for any reason, obviously we've got the communicators, so... Mm -hmm. I'm going to have a little wander through this installation and see if I can find anything cool, something All expensive. Right. Yeah, give me a... What, what are you rolling to find loot? I'm looking for hidden shit, my man. So I'm mm -hmm. skulking. Mm -hmm. Skulking. Like a uh, I, would, I would, again, highlight that skulking is you sneaking about. It's not spot hidden. It is <laughs> you you being hidden. <laughs> So being Sorry. hidden doesn't directly enhance your ability to find hidden stuff. So what you're saying is I can't use it for everything. <laughs> yeah, what I'm saying is the the words are verbs. So if you look at them like that, yeah. it tells you what they do. 
Okay. Okie dokie. Um, then I will attempt... Uh, I suppose I will... Um, I mean, if you want to skulk about the complex, you can do that. I'm just saying that it's not the thing to find look, shit to necessarily. Shit, yeah. Yeah. I see. I see what you're saying. Okay, I'm gonna. I'll attempt to use study. All right. I don't. I don't have any ranks in study. Cool. So we start at zero dice. Yep. And uh, you can spend two stress to get one die. I shall do that. Uh, you can accept a devil's bargain to get one die instead of the stress, I believe. All right. Okay. If you want that, then we can do that. Uh, and stick to the stress for now. Okay. And you can also, there's one gambit left. You can spend a gambit to get one die. Does anyone mind? Oh, we're we'll saving that for when things go horribly wrong. I have no objections. Yeah, go for it. Okay. Is this risky in this case or desperate? Uh, it's just risky. It's risky. Okay. Yep. Uh, I get a bonus die from the gambit. Um, oh, I should have had an extra roll there. One second. Oh, I suppose it didn't take into account. Oh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> nope, I got nothing. Nada. I see now we are finally running out of the incredible luck that you've had in the previous sessions. Damn okay. it, Jim. I, I'm a doctor, not an archaeologist. How am I supposed to know what to pick <laughs> up here? Uh, where did I... Here we go. So it was risky, and you rolled a three. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So things go badly. Uh, you suffer harm. A complication occurs. You end up in a desperate position. You lose this opportunity. Hmm. So. Uh, yeah. Hmm. 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 Let's go with a complication occurs, and it is that there is there is an activation that occurs uh, in the temple, and the metallic statues that you passed uh, come to life as a result of having basically activated the shrine with the data core. And they are not your friends. Oh, yeah, no, it's, we're, we'll get to the boulder okay. <laughs> in a minute when we're fleeing the place. So do you want to resist that yeah, consequence? I'm, I'm going to try. You will always succeed. It's just a matter of how much stress does it cost you. OK. So what uh, are you rolling to resist that? I have to roll my lowest thing, don't I? So. Uh, no, that's for vice. Okay. So you're skulking about how do you avoid, I suppose, tripping the sensors of the metallic mm -hmm. uh, droids, temple droids? Um, because I have brought some spy gear with me. Mm -hmm. me move on vertical surfaces. And yeah, so you, dodge you dodge the laser mm -hmm. trip wires. <laughs> yes. All right. Well, give us give us a roll. All over it. Yeah. Nice, nice. Yeah. So you uh, you understand that there's uh, these temple statues are in fact not statues at all. They are. Oh, you, did you use the gambit? Viper? Yeah, I did. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Okay, so there's one. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you understand that these statues are not statues at all. They're in fact droids that uh, are very much functional, but you've avoided activating them for now. 
However, you do not find what you were looking for because you're busy realizing that, oof, these statues might come alive. So what do you do? Can I also use study to look around and yes. see if there's anything I can find? Yes, okay, very much I've so. actually got that skill, so I just get my one dice for my one yep. point in that skill, yeah? Yep. Cool. And then either spend two stress to get one extra die or accept the devil's bargain and get an extra die. And then there's one gambit left. Do stress to get an extra dice, you say? Yep. Okay. So I rolled a four and a six. So that's a six, right? Yeah, that's a six, yeah. So yeah, cool. you get you get it. Uh, uh, all right, so... And you got an extra gambit. Yeah. Right, that as well. A... So, what did I find? Did you... How much study do you have? Just one. Just one. And you got and one from... the stress. Yeah, and then your third die... No, that's Vipers. Oh, yeah, yeah, because I'm yeah, looking at uh, roll 20. I'm yeah, yeah, rolling sorry. actual dice, yeah. sorry. Yeah, no, I was confusing myself there. So, yeah, you find... Um, uh, you find some of these shelves uh, which, which have... Uh, nothing much at all uh mostly but you do find a stash of what looks to be ancient writings there's a if there's a couple of tomes and then stacks and stacks of scrolls all scrolled up something zenith type, type might quite book. like yeah probably quality yeah very, uh, basically I'll as stuff my rucksack full as much as i can carry yeah. so you have a stack of mystic writings cool all righty then worth uh, of two cred, I will let you know. So yeah, actually, let's uh, yeah tick off one of one of your boxes uh, because it's a a thing you have to carry around. So righty then, uh, Zenith, uh, wh what's happening? In the well, well, like I say, I'm trying. I'm meditating on the flows of the way, and as I'm doing that, I'm obviously I'm not touching it because I don't interfere with what's going on, but I'm mm -hmm. observing the data core because I'm assuming there's some form of readout that like tells you sort of like how far through the process mm -hmm. it is. So I'm going to be observing that, but I'm also going to be watching the sort of shifting like holographic displays. Obviously, it's part of my efforts to like put me more in tune with the way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can tell that there's a. Uh, it's not numbers as such, but there's a glyph, uh, like you have in the Predator movies, where I was it, just thinking that way. It, it changes. It changes a bit, and uh, you can tell that that one is the one that uh, indicates the progress of this, whatever's happening. So I'm going to be observing that, but I'm almost as interested in, like you say, there was like these faded sort of holograms, sort of like. Yep, lines and stuff like that. I'm almost as interested in like how they're changing because obviously they're part of the same system, so I'm observing them as well. Right. Is there anything particular you want to achieve here and roll for? Um, I would like to make an attune roll again as mm -hmm. part of like my meditation, trying to unlock like my mm -hmm. knowledge of the way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, this is a place full of full of the way. You're Indeed. actually sitting on a way line, so exactly. So, I'm presuming it's risky. Uh, it is actually desperate. Okay, splendid. Because the consequences might be dire because you are in such a place of power. Okay. Um, effect. Uh Let's establish, so you're trying to achieve... Yeah, but well, basically, all my previous um, 
meditations have been designed to yeah. unlock like the way power with myself and you described it with my failed yeah. roles i'd hit like a bit of a sort of men like metaphysical block yeah. and i needed yeah. to sort of get somewhere where i could get more in tune with it so i'm almost attempting to like tap into like the way energy of this place and, like smash through that that metaphysical block i've got to like okay, open, yeah. open myself more fully to the way yeah, yeah so we'll we'll say it's a desperate thing to try but the effect is great because you're you're basically the uh, you're doing the way equivalent of like cra grabbing like a high voltage power line and being like okay let's crank this up <laughs> do, do i get any bonuses for the fact i'm like plugging myself into the way line mains um i think that's the great effect okay uh, in which case i'll take two stress to give myself a bonus yeah. dice yeah fantabular Boom, six. It's not showing up. Oh, there we go. Good. Good. Let's see. So a six is you do it. Also, mark XP uh, to resolve, is it? Um, good. Yes. So um, <laughs> you are very much not able to sit on the ground and meditate anymore because you've sort of reached out to like, uh, I'm trying to break this barrier that's holding me back. I brought the barrier with me. So I'm like, you're climbing out of your shell and you're stepping into this massive flowing current of the way. Uh, so what we see is Viper and Mushishi like rifling uh, stacks of uh, scrolls and whatnot in the back. And then uh, suddenly like Zenith springs up uh, because you are almost taken over by this massive current, this voltage of the way that's now running through you because you reached out and touched faith, I guess. Good, and, good. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, the, your hair stands on end uh, and uh, your skin is all tingly all over the place. And I think as a result, um, we can have a... Uh, great effect for your or rather we, we can have an extra die for your next time you're done trying to do your project thing uh, we can carry over an extra die because you have this infusion now uh, cool that. and do we also get another gambit for me rolling a six? Oh yes oh, yes so that, that, that's good because i'm one stress away from getting another trauma yeah uh, that might come in useful uh when uh, you're rifling in the back, uh, and Zenith has is is basically doing the <laughs> unlimited power. Let the way flow through you. Yeah. So I'm gonna tick our little clock there. So uh, the data core is one out of uh, ten aligned with the way line, and you can hear voices from where you came in. Actually, no, it's the other way around. So there's uh, Mushishi and Viper. Uh, you can hear from further in the complex, like behind the shrine going forward from the corridor and whatnot. On that side of the complex, you can hear human voices. Uh, the uh, very like signature uh, click and speak of helmeted individuals. Uh, that we can all probably remember from Star Wars with that uh, you can hear voices coming down from that away what do you heads do heads up Zenith there's someone coming we've got company I understand <laughs> yeah. the, uh, you'll hear back on the thing I'll say the, the data core has only just started to download the information we can't leave yet. And I suggest we all retreat to where the data core is and try and yeah. hold that position for as long as possible. I agree. Yeah, the rest of it doesn't really matter. It doesn't I, seem to be much of value here. I agree. Hopefully take, take, they'll piss off those statues. I agree. Take what you already have and rejoin me in the central chamber. All right, so you back. I, I will, yep, Viper. I, I was going to say, I will head back to the central chamber. There oh, is you, only you, one... Viper, you know what you should have done? Wait until they're like getting near the chamber you're in, then just like 
throw something that like sets off the droids and then like do it back out the door. Let the droids deal with them. <laughs> You know where the droids are. You know that they can be activated now. Yeah. Or ticked off, rather. <laughs> Let the uh, kill bot deal with him. I could do that. That would be terrible of me, wouldn't it? Yes. Also, we don't know who this is yet. They could be friends. <laughs> innocent, innocent people taking sanctuary from the storm. <laughs> what I was about to say, though, uh, Scumlord, is that I'm heading back to Central Chamber, right? Yeah. There's only one thing that would stop me. And I just want to make you aware of what that is. And if that is mm -hmm. there, then I would mm -hmm. stop and okay. disregard my order. <laughs> Which is, if it's anything I see that looks like clone technology. No. It, okay. it looks like, um, I don't know if you've probably not been in a lot of these places, but in your no. mind's eye, this is kind of what the sort of mystical precursor ruins look like. It's... It's dry, it's dusty, yeah. it, it looks old because things are made of stone here. And uh, there's a bunch of, to you for now, incomprehensible uh, like data sphere manifestations yeah, it, in, it in the air. It looks weird stuff, doesn't it? Yeah. Weird. Yeah, and the, the fact that they have these uh, <laughs> like devotional statue droids that you know are basically a, a security feature. Um, yeah, that, that's it. Uh, and you have the mystic writings there. You have uh, the shrine room. And yeah, no no clone technology around. Okay. So you are not stopped then? No, if that, that's the only thing that would make me disregard the advice given, mm -hmm. but I just felt I should make that clear because... Yep. I'm a man who likes to take risks. Mm -hmm. So you converge in the shrine room then? Yeah. Or, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So you converge in the shrine room and uh, the like helmeted uh, radio traffic uh, inches closer, closer and uh, eventually uh, into the shrine room uh, on, I'm, on the I'm far gonna, end, I'm yeah. gonna position myself like behind the door, where like the, the entrance where like these people are gonna come through. I want to make sure that we are between the doors and the data crystal yeah. while it's doing its downloading things. It's like floating in the air in the middle of the room, right? Yeah, it's in the it, it's yeah. settled on the the pedestal, but yeah, it's it's basically like in the middle of the room. And I'm thinking weapons out, but sort of pointed at the ceiling until we've decided whether or not they're a threat. So I'm gonna try the old. The old if end. they're not a threat to us taking that data crystal and fucking off, they can do whatever the hell they like once we've left. Well, you'll be you'll be pleased to know, Doc, <laughs> that I'm planning on trying the mystic mind trick on them when they come in, so hopefully we won't have to fight them. Good, good. And um, just to make you aware, Johannes, my plan is as they come in, because my my um, side dancing can be used on like small groups of people. My plan is to basically do the old like a uh, mind trick when I step in and be like, "This chamber is empty. There is nothing here. Go about your business." All right. So that that is exactly what we're going to do as they uh, come around the corner. Uh, so it's a helmeted individual, um, spotless. Uh, hegemonic armor uh sort of like light it's, it's not like a stormtrooper or anything but there's, a, there's like a breastplate and some like protective blades here and there and the uh like helmet obviously uh and some kind of presumably like scanning device in hand as this first individual comes in and you can hear that there's uh, multiple afterwards yeah so i'm gonna wait until they're all sort of gathered in the doorway and that's when i'm gonna try and do the um the mystic mind trick on them so i'm gonna try right, and like so get you, the whole group so you you step in front of them and be like there's no one here yeah I'm, I'm literally gonna say you found the chamber deserted you did your scan and there was nothing here you should leave and return to your base to report in good so they um they're 
and I'll spend a gambit to do that so I don't yeah. have to take any yeah, good. stress. So you, you don't have to take stress. However, please roll me... I, What would you roll here? A sway or a tune? Something like that? I'd say probably a tune because I'm trying to use the weight yeah. to just like yeah. force good. them to... So, you're, yeah, so basically it's like what are you using? Uh, yeah. So you're actually using the way to... Yeah, because I, I think partly as well because I'm all feeling like buoyed up by the fact I've got all this... Like, yeah. <laughs> that I'm going to try and like sort of tap I've already tapped into that I'm going to try and use that because as far as I'm seeing it I'm actually like defending this site from someone who's far worse than we are we're just like we're just going to copy your data files and then we'll be on our way thanks very much whereas they're just going to be like strip the whole thing and take it back to the hedge money so yeah so yep. I'm going to give that a go mm -hmm. do you want the devil's bargain I know you don't want stress. <laughs> I, 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 I'm almost tempted to take the stress. I could take another trauma. Um, yeah, what, what, you what's, could. The, what's the devil's bargain? Uh, hmm. I'm going to say the devil's bargain is that the temple droids activate, like all of them. This will be a problem for everyone, not just you. <laughs> it's going to be a problem for everyone present. Do, do you know what? Th this game's all about doing like crazy stuff and crazy shit. Yeah, I'll take the devil's bargain. Why not? Mm -hmm. Do it. Extra dice. Okay, so I'm, is, a, is this a risky position? Mm. Seems pretty risky to me. Yeah, I'm just Telling trying the to storm figure... trooper. Yeah, I'm. I'm guessing. Right, let's go with risky. Uh, okay. Desperation will come later. <laughs> okay, I'm assuming the effect's standard. Standard, yeah. And I get a bonus dice for the Devil's Bargain. Yeah. Six. Boom. Good. Good. You, you do it. There is nothing for you to so, see here, hegemonic so, trooper. Yeah. So <laughs> you step, <laughs> you step uh, out from your hiding place, and you go. You did your scan. There is nothing here. Uh, and no one here as well. And uh, for a moment, uh, and there's a whole team in the corridor. Uh, for a moment, they uh, they all kind of like stop in their steps and they sort of look around a bit. And then the one at the front with there's a there's like a red stripe in the in the helmet to indicate their leader. And uh, the one with the scanner, which is the leader, uh, is like. Clicks on the on the scanner for a couple of times, like knocks it a bit, and it's like, huh? And you can hear Hold that. boys. Like, seems like the swarm is messing with the equipment. I'm getting bad readings, and there's nothing here anyway. We should go. And uh, Viper, uh, you now know that Zenith has clouded their brains with the way. You can tell that these guys are, well, first of all, yeah, they are with the 51st Legion. However, oh, no. uh, they are the, um, what, what is it called? The Science Division. So these, these aren't stormtroopers. The worst. They're, they're, <laughs> they're, they're smart. They're worse. They're, they're desk jockeys. <laughs> what they have, the lack of honor, they make up for in smarts. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's a it's a science division team, uh, so it's not a crew of heavies. It's scientists. All right, so they are clouded, and they start to make their way back in, through the corridor. Presumably, there's another entrance somewhere when the temple droids uh, kick off. So there's a there was already the low hum. Uh, when you activated the shrine and now the hum intensifies and there's a vibration in the air and one by one these uh, temple droids uh, start to move from their sort of uh, reverential positions and uh, you can hear the science division team leader immediately just go weapons weapons droids and uh, they spur into action like 
in the corridor that they were in heading out from the shrine room and you can hear uh like behind you because you're in the other side of the room now you can hear from the other side of the shrine that there's activity there as well what do you do uh, okay so do, obviously cause we've explored a bit do you have any idea like how many droids they're likely to be dealing with and how many droids we're likely to have to deal with uh, for you, you saw at least a dozen on your way here, but they were in those small antechambers, yeah. so they're not here right now. Let's say there's there's like two in the shrine room uh, on on your side uh, on the way like where you came in, and um, from where the science division team came in, you you haven't been there, so you don't know okay. how many there are. But you can see a couple that they're going to fight with. I'd suggest hold your fire, because if we don't present a threat, they'll probably just go after the thing that is presenting a threat, i.e. those guys shooting guns. Well, I mean, in, in the droids that are sort of near us, does it look like they're like coming to deal with us? Or? Uh, yeah, they're, making the, they're in the other side of the shrine room. Okay. They're making their way towards you. And have they got like any weapons or anything? Or? Well, uh, they have their hands, uh, and I suppose there's some clicking involved when you can see like their hands sort of like changing shape. Uh, so like the hand deconstructs and slides back, and uh, there's a what looks for all the world like a barrel of some kind that now replaces the hand. Right, I think that constitutes that they're coming for us. So um, my plan is I'm going to use one of the gambits and my kinetics to basically like full ball like leap across the room, plasma blades mm -hmm. swinging and like <laughs> as I come down on it. <laughs> yeah, good. Uh, I like it. So you you use one of the gambits to do that. Uh, I'm on the correct level, maybe. Here we go. So one gambit you. And to use one of the gambits to... Yeah, we should be down to one now. Yeah, yeah. So you jump across the shrine room to the other side. Yeah, my plan and... is basically to just land on it with my feet and like... Yeah, good. Uh, give, me a, give me a roll for whatever okay. that might be. I think it's probably going to be a scrap roll. Yeah, sounds good. Sounds so... good. I'm assuming it's risky. Yeah, yeah, risky. Great effect. Okay. And do I get any bonus for my precursor artifact that I'm using as a weapon? I guess you would. Sweet. Five. Yeah. All right. So uh, you do it, which is it is destroyed. Uh, and it occurs to you now that because these are actually droids and they seem to be fairly sophisticated ones as well, uh, given all the givens, their precursor tech to start with, you can probably salvage AI cores from these. And those are, they're common. Like it's not like super like, oh, AIs. AIs are common and Viper has a bot as well, which has an AI core. However- I, I've got to admit, I was thinking once we've like scragged them, like scrape them up yeah. and take them for yeah. parts. So as, as you melt the torso of this uh, fairly intricate droid, you figure, huh, yeah, they probably have uh, like a complex core. So you Resale. could scavenge those. So um, yeah, it's not like it's, it's gold bars, but it's not nothing. It's, it's good scrap. Um, right, so you do it. However, uh, there is le consequence. Because this was risky, so you do it, but there's a consequence. You suffer harm, complication occurs, you have reduced effect. You end up in a. Uh, I think let's go with desperate. Uh, so when you're rolling next, uh, you're, you're going to be in a desperate position because the other one uh, is now like they had a, a chance to lock onto you as you jumped the, the first one. And what happens is they shoot, it's not going to damage you yet because it's not uh, doing the thing yet. But uh, the thing that makes it desperate is. Uh, you get tagged a couple of times, and for a moment you're like, ah, oh, like it, this sit, like I, <laughs> like I got. You feel the physical impact, like ah, oh, I, I got tagged clearly, and uh, I, I don't feel the pain, but I feel really cold. So uh, 
probably that that's it for me like uh, they burned a hole through me and now i'm dying but it's not that uh when you like sort of stumble a bit uh, after having scrapped the first droid and you put your hand on there and your the skin i, I presume you would have a have a glove on but the glove sticks to your side and uh as you like rip it away you realize that there's like a sheet of ice uh, on your side, which is it's slowing you down now, uh, and this droid is blasting you with these. It looks like blaster bolts, but it it freezes on impact, so okay. you're you're getting sprayed by liquid ice that hardens on you. Nice. Um, so yeah, it's going to be desperate for you going forward. And uh, Viper and Mushishi, you can see this happen as well. So uh, Zenith is being uh, frozen in place <laughs> in the other side of the shrine room. What? Okay, can we shoot at that statue? Yes, yes, you can. <laughs> Good. Uh, what dice am I using? Uh, it depends on what. It, what are you? Is it is scrap? Is your usual? Like, I don't have scrap. Fighting stuff. Um, scramble. You, you could. I'm uh, trying to. You could scramble to back up my body. God, God damn it! You're a doctor, not a one-on-one -on -one combatant. Indeed, yeah. I am, and I can blag an extra dice that way as well, but that'll cost me two stress, which I yeah. don't have right now. Um, yeah, it must, must be terrible oh, for you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, I'm I'm ticking the the thing. Uh, it it would have ticked when um, uh, when Zenith was doing his thing. And also, we have the clock going there. If you want to proactively like further it along, you can try and do that as well. But this is like the thing working on its own. But if you want to fiddle with it, try and make it faster, you can tr definitely try that as well. So you're, you're yes, scrambling. So one. one. OK. That seems good. <laughs> It really doesn't. <laughs> uh, uh, one, things go badly, you suffer harm, a complication occurs, you end up in a desperate position, you lose this opportunity. I think uh, the complication is that there's more droids that bust in and you can't get your, your shot. So like more uh, of these temple droids like just run in to the shrine room and you were you were going to like just melt this one uh but there's more now and you uh you take cover as they start shooting these freezing bolts your way as well so there's more droids now in the room viper yeah what to do so the room is filled with droids uh, there's at there's three droids in the shrine room currently uh, okay. Mushishi is taking uh, some cover behind, I, I guess, like one of the stone statues a bit. And um, Zenith is uh, just finished uh, slicing and dicing one of these and now is in the process of being sprayed with ice. Okay. Do they appear hostile? I mean, that's yes. Like <laughs> yes. Okay. They do. Then I will pull out my other blaster. So I have two blasters now. And I'm going to engage in some aggressive diplomacy. Mm hmm. I presume you're going to roll sway or something. Okay. <laughs> Not this time. I'm going to. He's going to skulk up. up to him and shoot. <laughs> I'm going to scrap them to death. Oof. I likes uh, it. Uh, okay, and but do like kind of a swan, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, this I say is probably risky or desperate. Uh, yeah, it's it's risky. Um, do you yeah. want to push yourself for two stress for an extra yeah. die, or do you want a uh, devil's gambit, a uh, devil's uh, bargain rather, for uh, an extra yes. die? Yes, I do. W which one? Devil's bargain. Devil's bargain. So, uh, da -da -da -da. Uh, I'm gonna say you, um, You'll get the dice. However, as you fly into the room like you were in a John, move, John Woo movie, um, they're going to 
uh, tag you a couple of times with these ice bolts, and uh, sure. you'll you'll get uh, a level of harm, level one. Sure, sure. Which will uh, lessen your effect by one. However, if you want to trade position for effect, you'll get back to standard effect, and you will be in a desperate position. Yes, let's do that. That sounds good. Cool. Uh, okay, so good. please please roll with one extra die. There's one gambit as well if you want to spend that. Yeah, I'll, I'll save the gambit for my colleagues. All right. So plus one die and uh, desperate and standard. Okay. Blame. So uh, mark your XP. And uh, you Oink. do it, but there's a consequence. Uh, you suffer severe harm, <clears throat> a serious a complication occurs. Hmm. Hmm. I think the serious complication is going to be that uh, the, um, uh, the science division team, while they're busy fighting the droids, uh, the leader is uh, unarmed. So they're trying to figure out their equipment. And look, <laughs> we can hear as as uh, viewers of the show, uh, we can hear the science team leader uh, say on their comms, it's like, I don't understand. There's no one in the room, but there's blaster fire. Uh, I'm going to call HQ about this. We need, we need help of some kind. So, um, the science team leader is being buffeted by the two uh, forces of on one side, the side dancing clouding his mind, and the other is his instruments saying that there's like hu human guns are being fired here, but there's no one here. Uh, so he's going to contact HQ, which translates to you guys um, getting heat in the system. Fair enough. All righty then, uh, Zenith, what up? Okay, so we still got like three other droids that are fighting us, and there's more yeah. in the corridor fighting the... Yeah, yeah the science, science team is fighting team. their droids over there, and you have three in this shrine room that you're in now. Uh, okay, well, I think at this point, as you say, as I'm, my cloak's been iced up, I sort of shrug off my cloak, and that's when I reveal that I'm wearing my armor underneath my cloak. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tick them two boxes and get me some of that sweet armor. Cool. So you can reduce, whenever you're suffering harm now, you can reduce it by two levels. Yep. And uh, then, for one, like that's it's a one use item thing. Yep. So, like when you get tagged for, if you get tagged for two levels of damage, you can reduce it to zero. Okay. Yep. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to spin around to the next one and I think what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to I'm going to use the last gambit and I'm going to use mm -hmm. my kinetic so instead of fighting this droid I'm basically going to just like fling it into the corridor with the science team and let oh. them deal with another one of them. Yeah, that sounds good. So you you pick up one of these and there's a there's an increase now it gets almost painful for everyone else except zenith um you you feel as if you're underwater quite deep uh when zenith reaches out with uh the, the, <laughs> i almost said the forbidden word with the way and uh <laughs> flings this temple droid uh across the shrine room all the way into the corridor <laughs> uh that leads out and uh the science team leader gets tagged with the droid and there's like a bowling alley effect where like people and droids are just tumbling uh, over each other in the corridor and uh, uh, the pressure lets go when uh, Zenith uh, is finished with this maneuver quick, quick question um, yes in order for us to get out do we have to go down the corridor the science team are in no, they came in from the other side. So presumably there's a different exit over there. In which case, on the, as I've just flung this one, on the comms to Zenit, sorry, to Viper, uh, I'm going to shout, bring that door down like, to trap them in there with the with the droids. If we can block that off, mm -hmm. we only have to deal with these two. Yeah. You haven't seen actual doors here in the complex. However, you could certainly try and... Mess with the corridor. 
itself. Or block it with the shells or like something. Well, I, I, have. I, I don't know about um, I don't know about Viper, but I'm hoping he has the opportunity to have a detonator like myself. <laughs> be a shame yeah. if roll, roll, roll a thermal just... detonator into like the mouth of the corridor <laughs> it seems that we planned for the same uh, situation that's right we, we drink at the same bars I see that those bars where and he's holding a to... thermal detonator <laughs> oh! that's a pretty good impression yeah <laughs> alright so um Viper Musishi, what do you do? Uh, there is two droids now, uh, who which are uh, blasting, uh, trying to hit Musishi, uh, and one of the other droids, uh, the third droid rather, uh, just doesn't exist in the shrine room anymore because it's in the corridor with the science team. What do you do? Uh, right, I'm hiding behind the altar. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to scramble to avoid getting actually shot myself. Good, good. At this point, I'm like, I've got to keep myself alive so that I can go and pick up the mess of those two. Mm -hmm. And I'm hoping one of them's going to tag that robot. Yep. So you're scrambling to safety, basically. Yeah. Yep. Good, good, good. Uh, we don't have gambits. However, uh, if you want to push push for stress, that's possible, or if you want a devil's bargain for an extra die, that's now, also possible. I'm in a desperate situation, right? Does that mean I get extra dice? Uh, no, but it means you get XP when you roll. Right, okay. Uh, can I use the gambit, guys? Uh, we don't have gambits anymore. Oh, we don't have any left, okay. Yeah. Uh, I'll just roll the scramble then. right ho. Do it live. Sometimes you've got to roll a hard six, as we know. Sometimes you just kind of... That, that's, a, that's a half of a hard six. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Be like, hey, hey, do you remember when we used to have a doctor and notched a pair of smoking booze? <laughs> I was awfully fond of that doctor. <laughs> I, um... We have the technology. Not really built for combat, though. <laughs> I think I what happens is this diplomatic solution to these robots. I mean, are you we trying to just put our guns down and let them go and deal with the other people who had guns? Are you trying to say that your character's not a combat droid? <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> Take a drink. Um, so uh, there's going to be a complication that occurs as a result of this. They uh, basically are pinned down, and uh, you are not in safety, so they will keep shooting at you because they can however they're not explicitly hitting you they're pinning you down at the moment so you're huddling successfully however the consequence is that uh one of them because you're pinned down and um one of them has the opportunity they approach the uh plinth with the data core on it and they touch like some of the uh like hovering uh, tactile holographic controls and uh, the thing speeds up I'll put down a couple of more ticks so the droid does something to the data core which Zenith knows that it's speeded up whatever the data core is doing so that's good however as a, the actual consequence is that there's uh, another wave of uh, this uh, pressure that em is emitted from the shrine itself to every direction. And after that wave passes you, uh, you can hear an increasing tremor. And there's- Robot power up. There's, <laughs> there's sand uh, sort of drifting down from the ceiling as everything shakes a bit. I, I think they've probably just hit the auto destruct. So the whole place is experiencing slight tremors uh, now, which is an indication of things to come. We uh, need to get the fuck out of here. Not until we've got the information.
Hmm. Is it is it Viper? I think it's Viper. Yeah. Viper, oh. see if you can speed that damn data car up. Uh, this whole place is coming down around us. Precursor technology is not my expertise, <laughs> really. It's not anyone's expertise. I'm looking. I'm looking at my options here. Looking. If I was Faust, just slag one of the droids. Yeah, I think that's my best shot, really, in this situation. So just to confirm, Scum Master, uh, mm -hmm. the previous uh, altercation, did I take a level one harm? Yes. Uh, so just to make sure I write this Yeah, down. put down, uh, I suppose, put down like Frostbite, because they, uh, they tagged okay. you with... Right, just to make sure, yeah. Because I know I, listened, I changed the yeah. effect and stuff, didn't I? So I just wanted to be yeah. sure that yeah. was correct. Okay, um, so I've got two blasters. Does that mean I can attack twice in this scenario, or just that I have? Let me refer to the rule book. I don't remember offhand if there was mention of this here. So it's it's um, a separate item on the equipment list, isn't it? It might just be that. Uh, so read out the inventory list that you're using. So what are the things that you're taking? So at the moment, I've got communicator, spy gear, a blaster, and a second blaster. I and, think, uh, I unless I can find something, and I don't necessarily think I think there is something there, I'm just going to do a quick search on the net as well. It might just be a case of you pulling out a blaster and then losing that and being like, uh, ha, 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 I have a second. I have right, a second okay. blaster. Uh, let's see. Um, Okay. Mm -hmm. We can't have we can't have heavy blasters, can't we? Uh, is it on your list? It is on my list, yeah. But I think didn't the ship upgrade allow us to have heavy blasters? Uh, yeah, your license allows you to have legal heavy blasters. Yeah. So you you everyone can have heavy blasters. But people who don't have the license and have heavy blasters in the town will get thrown in jail. What, what's the difference in using a heavy blaster in this scenario? Like uh, more never... mo damage. Hook. Well, that that seems like I can't assist with um, schmarts because I don't know this precursor tech, and I can't fly this temple out of out into space unless that's a roll unless. I could make. unless that's a role i could make unless it's a role i could that could maybe figure out this entire installation is in fact a ship that would be a bit as balls but if not i will whip out a heavy blaster and try to take one of these out with a space shotgun good good i will style my pistols which means I'm now at equipment thing of six, which I believe mm -hmm. is okay for a heavy load. Yeah, it's still good. Yeah. It's it's the most you can have, I believe. Okay. Yeah. So you're all tapped out. Yeah. But you have a heavy blaster, which is. Which is good. Yeah. So is that an extra dice in this case? Uh, it's. Uh, let's see, actually, what they say I'm about it. it. I'm going to scrap my item. Let's see what they say in the item list. Uh, a little scrap of doodle. Heavy blaster. You can do considerable damage to vehicles, heavy armor, and constructions like unshielded doors. Has about a dozen shots. So just mow damage. Okay. Uh, no extra dice, but like great effects. Like you, you will if you tag one of these, they will die. That's what I'm gonna do. Um, I'm not gonna. Is it risky? Oh, we say desperate in this situation. I don't feel like I, I'm going to. I, I guess risky for you. Risky, yeah. So the idea is, yeah, that I see, you know, when they, when they shoot me with the ice beam, so I'm like, oh, it's like that, is it? <laughs> <laughs> well, I will let you know that I am hot and cold. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I see. You turn the heat up. All right. Oh, well. Well. <laughs> Yeah. 
You know what I yeah. said? Eventually, eventually our roles would start backfiring. Yeah, and this, really is, hope, this is that session, apparently. I was really hoping that wasn't going to be me, you know? like that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, so you're, you're trying to shoot, uh, I suppose, the droid that was fiddling with the data core thing. So what it does is it dodges your... Um, it dodges your heavy blaster fire. I'm going to say until the very end. So you do tag it and you blow out its central, well, the chest piece basically. And it gets close enough to you that it, like the, the frozen bolt that is like spits out of the, uh, the gun arm. What happens is you think it's shooting the ceiling while it approaches you, uh, being torn apart by your blaster fire, and you do destroy it. However, it gets to you, and it, it fires the gun, and instead of the bolts going out, it's just a large, long ice spear that forms in the, in the hand, and it just walks up to you and just like pushes you down to the ground, impaled by the ice spear. So uh, level two harm, uh, impaled. Uh, if you want to resist that, you can. Um, um, uh, <laughs> as, as always. So I've nearly maxed out my stress tract yep. uh, from earlier. Join I guess, like, me on the trauma side of the way. I guess I didn't reset um, when I took that trauma earlier. Like, I don't think you, you get it. Do, do you know, have trauma? Yeah, I have the frost, frostbite, don't I? Uh, no, that's harm. All right. Oh, trauma. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, yeah that's, that's different. Yeah. yeah. Trauma is different. Level two trauma. Uh, oh, that's, har that's harm. Uh, so level one harm, frostbite, and level two harm is incoming now, being impaled by the ice spear. Yeah, yeah. However, trauma is what happens when your stress goes over the track. Yeah, right. and you 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 see where it says like cold, hunted, obsessed. You tick one of them, and you tick one trauma when you roll over. Right. Okay. Um, trauma is mental, whereas yeah. harm is physical. Right. Yep. Okay. Right. I will try and resist it because you do mm -hmm. not want to be impaled. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Uh, so please roll probably your prowess then. Yeah. It makes all the all the sense in the world. I so. mean, I need to, and I need it. Uh, okay. Don't let me down. Good. So no no problem. So it it walks up to you, and you're like. Why won't you die? And there's like blasting bits out of it, and you just watch as the spear forms, and it just keeps coming, Terminator-like, and it goes in for the lunge, but you manage to dodge it, and it just falls to pieces on the ground, and the ice spear shatters. So good, you dealt with that, and uh, yeah, uh, the clock ticks. And we have Zenith. What's up? Okay, so there's only one of these uh, yes. droids that left now. Uh, it's just spraying uh, ice bolts at Musishi, who is huddled down in the sand. <laughs> okay, and how many stress does it cost to use a special ability? Uh, your, your force powers? Yeah. Two. Okay. Um, in which case, I can't really do that at the moment, so... I'm, and I'm assuming we didn't get a gambit for... Oh, we did. We did from the six in that. So we Sweet. have one gambit. In which case, I'm going to use that gambit. And okay. again, I'm just going to hurl this other droid into the corridor beyond. Good. <laughs> just All right. get it out of the way. Yeah, so I'm going to make a fortune roll for the science team to see how they're doing. <laughs> uh... Not good. They're not doing so well. And then I'm going to roll for the uh, temple droids. Yeah. So uh, you toss in one more droid. And it's, um, it's a horrific scene <laughs> as the droid tumbles in, in the dust. Again, like bowling over the science team leader who can't catch a break. However, one of the science team guards is like 
firing some sort of rapid fire blaster at one of these droids and the blasters uh, blast bolts just keep bouncing off the metallic surface and it impales one of these uh, guards on one of these ice spears and just like lifts the guard in the air and the guard just uh, screams into the um, helmet voice comms uh, yeah the science team is having a bad time the droids are slaughtering them in the corridor all right, so that's that's if, that. If there's anything anyone can do to speed up that damn data core, <laughs> now's the bit of king time. As far uh, as I know, you're the only one with any kind of skill in doing that. Are you trying to tell me you're a doctor and not a precursor technician? So no one's shooting at me now, right? Now there's no droids in the shrine anymore because okay. they're all in murdering the science team. <laughs> So uh, I'll run over to the interface that the droid was yep. using. Um, can I remember what he did to make it go faster before? Yeah, with a roll. So, <laughs> Well, damn it, I'm a doctor. <laughs> Not a whatever that is. So I've got two <laughs> dice and one. One and a... Oh, four and a six. That's good. So we have a gambit, first off. Yeah, yeah. Woohoo! We have un gambit. And uh, yeah, you do it. So you remember what the droid did, and you you try and do the same thing, and you speed it up. And I'm going to roll for how many segments that is. Well, I guess it would be two, because you're just roll the standard thing. Cool. So yeah, yeah the clock fills. Woohoo! That. All right, grab the grab the data core and let's book. Yeah. So the data core, Zenith knows, is finished. Right. I need you, Zenith, to get your sword and cut that ice thing on either side of Viper's shoulder without cutting Viper and then help him get up. Don't mind me if you cut me a little bit. Just get it out. Yeah, um, I'll, I'll just... Don't take it out yet. I, I'll just stride over, sort of grabbing like the, the torso of one of the robots as I'm moving, because that's scrap value. I don't give a fuck. Come on. Uh, and then I'm just going to very carefully with my plasma sword, but... Yep. Just slice the ice. Yep. Yes, yeah, <laughs> slice so the leave ice. It, leave it through there, because yeah. I want to be able to save your shoulder awesome. and your arm. And let's get the foot back to the ship. All right, okay. all use goods. Okay, well, Doc, grab grab the data core. Viper, if you can manage it, grab grab some more of these droid bits. You got it. I've got the data core. I've got your books. Um, and basically, I'm not worrying about droid bits. I'm worrying about Viper. Let's go. Uh, and basically, as we're as we're sort of at our doorway, ready to go out, I'm going to turn round, produce a detonator out of my cloak, and I'm going to roll it down the opposite <laughs> corridor. <laughs> <laughs> and then, then I'm going to turn around like a cool guy, not looking at an explosion, yeah. and we're all just going to get the hell out of dodge. Yeah, you're you're putting it down your sandstorm visor as the orange glow expands behind you. <laughs> yeah, so the detonator goes off, and the corridor collapses, and you are spared mercifully the dying screams of the 51st Legion Science Division team being destroyed by this to, 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 to be honest i'm thinking my, my my way of thinking is like if if they die in the explosion of my detonator it's quick as opposed to being massacred yep. slowly by a load of ice wielding kill bots <laughs> yeah so they are done uh and yeah, yeah. uh <laughs> you, yeah they most definitely are you book it uh, yeah as we're on our way out if i see any of those like strips of cloth like prayer cloths or whatever i'm gonna snag yep. some of them as well yeah <laughs> Off the, so you're you're tossed this way and that uh, as you enter uh, the the yeah. outside world. So s secure the data core, the droid bits, and everything we've got to the bikes, and then just like gun it back towards the ship. Is I think the order of the day. Yep. So you you drive your hover bikes. You have the system for navigation that Mushishi set up. Uh, you know the way with that so you make it back to the ship yep uh and in the ship 
you know that you have to deal with the problem in more detail. However, maybe not in a storm. So the thing you can do, Viper, I'm talking to you mostly because you probably like overview of it is like, oh, yeah, we need to replace some of these parts like this. This is all gone and we need to replace that. And as, as that is going on, someone else uh, either like putting up the ramp from the rear with the hover bikes that have come in. So like pushing the button to make the uh, hover bike garage door close and you're looking outside into the sandstorm and there's a, there's a silhouette behind uh, the swirling sand uh, that sort of rises up from the ground. It's a large uh, silhouette that reaches way high up as you close the ramp. And um, I suppose uh, <laughs> there's, a, there's an alert from the ship sensors, which are doing quite okay, but there's a storm. But the ship sensors eventually pick out, so like, bi bioform detect and then there's a stream of data which basically uh, paints you a picture of this like several tall it's, it's like a skyscraper made of flesh that your sensors are picking up next to you whatever you're going to do with those engines Viper I suggest you do it quickly and um, guys can you see that and I'm like <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I gotta turn this alarm off. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh dear. Ability of making system like jumps between ah, systems. Ah, but we've lost the thrusters. Yeah, but the, like yeah, the thrusters are gone, or at least they need proper fixing. But you could juice them up a bit to at least try and get out of here. Okay. Well, what I'll do is, uh, in order to help uh, Viper, I'm gonna tick my last box and pass him over my repair tools. Okay. Ooh. Oh, Viper. So you One, get two, you so get I've a toolkit. I've got six boxes, which means I can't use any other equipment. Yeah. You, you Repair tools. <laughs> although, <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> illicit drugs might be the way to go here. I'm thinking, can I effectively like do a combat medic roll so that he's not rolling on one dice? He's... Uh, yeah. Uh, so so like, reduce his harm. Yeah. Oh, let's, let's, there's only one thing for it. You need to repair this thing. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, <laughs> we're going in now. So what you... yeah, I am gonna do like a proper surgery on you, but right now we need to get the fuck out of Dodge, and we can't do it unless this engine works, and you're the one that knows how to fix the engine. Yeah. So, 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 I, so... I'm thinking like leaving that ice thing for the moment but like probably some sort of thing with like spray foam around it to stop it bleeding Give him some and then adrenaline. putting a shitload of drugs into adrenaline. his system to keep him going for the meantime oh, yeah. yeah let's we'll put him in a controlled position when he's rolling the uh to repair the uh engines which does help quite a lot so yeah get your uh doctoring going on so i get three deaths Okay, can I um can I um take a stress to give him an extra dice? Yes, you can. So I, 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 I know it'll get me a trauma, but I'm tapped out, man. But yes. <laughs> okay, cool. So Zenith, um, if it's just the one that you're missing, then yeah. you can just reset your stress, like yep. set it to zero, and pick another trauma. Uh, any anyone suggestions for traumas? I'm veering between cold and or vicious. Uh... <laughs> I suppose cold is fitting because of the ice. I think paranoid. I'm not really that paranoid, though. No, he's the justification, right? That thing that's just risen out of the, the desert, you think it's after the thing we've just taken, and you... you... That, 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 that's not paranoid. That's a reasonable assumption. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would say cold, reckless, or vicious, based on how my character's been behaving. Reckless probably reckless. is the Going easiest... The reckless crew. Reckless is the easiest, I, I would say, of those to yeah, use reckless. in generating XP. So. Okay, yeah, I'll go for Reckless then. Trauma Ooh. too. Yeah. So, Mushishi, did you roll your doctoring for the drugs? Okay, good. Good, good, good. Oh, that gambit. Yep. So, Viper, uh, you... 
<laughs> you have a party in your veins. Uh, you so you're back. in a con controlled position as you roll what? To repair the engine? Uh, rig would be, wouldn't it? Don't, don't forget you get a plus one yeah. from me. Yeah, uh, plus yeah. one dice, and then there's one gambit if you want to cash that in. Yes. Go for it, man. Cash it. Yeah. So plus two dice, controlled position. <laughs> These rolls, though. You're rolling guys, like me. I think I am the weak link here. <laughs> okay, so... Something else, or do that again, except now it's risky. All the drugs into the engines. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> Put the cocaine in the tank. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, which one is it? Um, do you try it again, or do you want to try something else? Uh, and I will point out that you you will not get the extra two dice from the Gambit and Zenith for the next roll, because it's one roll only. Come Viper, for fortune favors the brave. Who dares wins, my dude. It's going to have to be, let's just fuck it and go to space. <laughs> like, I'm going to have to helmet, aren't I? I'm just going to have to punch it. Okay, so you're making do with the, with the faulty drives. Yeah, yeah I'm, just I, gonna, I'm just going to go and... Like, look, yeah. hold on, hold on, hold on to yeah. something. So you're going you're gonna to leave the repair effort entirely and just go like, fuck it, we'll do it live. Yeah, we got to... This, is, this, isn't, <laughs> this isn't the time. For, we haven't got... There's, there's a giant dickhead coming for us. We need to get out of here. <laughs> Yeah, so as, as Viper has been tooling with this, uh, Zenith and Mushishi, you will have had the chance to look at the scanners, and it is it is a giant sandworm uh, rising up from the sands. As, Shy Halud! As Viper runs back into the cockpit, he's like, can't get them fixed, need to kick off. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> pushes the big lever forward. <laughs> like, we just fucking go. So, Viper, um, I suppose you're helming the thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, take, if there take was take some stress, Viper. Get a bonus. If there was a level under desperate, I would put it there. But we're doing a desperate roll, limited effect. All of steel. Actually, that's, that's... I, actually, I'm gonna say no effect until you boost it up with. And you can do that, by the way. There's so much that you can do with stress that I forget. You can suffer two stress and lay, raise the effect level as well. So. Uh, if you want to, you could take four stress for one extra die and limited effect, or two uh, stress and get limited effect, because you will have no effect with your shit drives. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm mm -hmm. going to use Helm as the skill, naturally. Yep. Um, I'm going to take four stress. That will put me in a trauma. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you could so also I'm... take a Devil's Bargain for the dice, by the way. Yes. And we've got a gambit. Uh, we... I think I... Yeah, we, I we do not. Yeah. a gambit, yeah. didn't I? Oh, right, okay. Okay. Oh, I yeah, you did. You did, yeah. Yeah, so... This scenario, my trauma is going to be reckless, though, because... Oh damn! This is red. Yeah, boy. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> so it goes. So I've got one. So one trauma would put me at the max. So I can then have three left over, which goes on to the yeah. next. Yeah, okay. to the next. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Right. But you don't need to. So, uh, so you have your helm, which is two, I guess. Yep. And then you'll get one from the gambit. So. Yep. Three dice. Three Do dice. you then want to suffer two stress for an extra die? Yes, yeah, so I'm taking four stress, one for an yeah. extra die. Yes, okay, and good. One for the effect. And, yeah, for the, one for the effect. So four dice, desperate, limited effect. Let's go. <laughs> okay. Let's uh, do it. Desperate. Uh, four ones. Here we go. Limited effect. Bonus dice. So I'd get two bonus dice, wouldn't I, in total? Yeah. Yeah. For a total of four. Five. Consequence. And the consequence is quite severe as befitting a desperate action. So you, uh, wh what do you do, by the way? Do you, do you try and fly away or like what? Uh... This is more how I expect a mission to go. 
So right. let's see. Zenith, deal with whatever's going on outside. Viper, sick bay now. So I think uh, it's it's your jump drive. So you you both of your drives are down now. So yeah, so I'm no, presu- no, no, let's, let's... Yeah, I'll take the data core and I'll take like, the the robot scrap components in a sack, mm-hmm. and I'm going to go and meet our contact and like make the handover, and hopefully yep. collect our cash, which will probably spend most of repairing the ship. <laughs> we'll see, we'll see. So uh, we'll, in the interest of expediency, we're gonna. This is going to be the ending montage here. So you arrive victorious uh, uh, in Ursia City and. Uh, Zenith goes to do the business bit, so you meet a representative of um, uh, Jezri, your fixer friend, and uh, you hand over the data core, you hand in the uh, robot scrap. And, yeah, uh, I, I, but I'm going to keep the um, I'm going to keep like, the prayer scroll. strips and scrolls yeah. tucked back because I want to yeah. study them. Yeah, so you keep those, but you hand in two robots, was yeah. it? Because Viper took one and you took one, yeah. so two robots, so basically two AI cores and then the actual. Uh, data core itself which you use to record the data and temple how doctoring works like in game i know that i know how you recover in downtime from damage but i'm not exactly sure how for example if mushishi wanted to help Zin, uh, viper with some if of the it's damage. possible in game i'm quite happy to do it i've taken a fine med kit as my last yeah. items however if it's going to be a pain in the ass and we're going to be stuck here for 20 minutes worrying about numbers, then just do it in the downtime system because it's yeah. easier. <laughs> just see. just give him an extra dice or a plus one or something. Oh, so your your healing abilities apparently are like laid out as special abilities. So I'm looking at a patch, for example. So that would be your first aid. So basically, you if, if someone gets tagged real hard downtime, and I'm I'm showing you the handout now if you want to refer that to that. Oh, also, yeah, sorry. Uh, so the payoff was that you got 10 creds. Uh, the heat, let's uh, do that first so we can... Oh, yeah, it was a completely smooth and quiet uh, mission. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no trouble. No. I suppose the only advantage is they didn't identify us. Yeah, they don't know who. Uh, that would have been uh, uh, more of an issue. That was another reason why I wanted to blow them up because I'm like quickly before yep. I'm throwing droids at them, like I'll quick distract them before they can tell them who it is. Yeah, <laughs> it's just like quick. Um, so that's three because of the uh, the message that they got out. Then let's see. Uh, I'd say. Hmm. I'd say contained, uh, standard exposure. But yeah, there were there was bodies though. Um, it helped because it's that wasn't wasn't a bounty. Yeah, ki- yeah, it wasn't a bounty and killing the science team wasn't on the level. So, uh, tune for this time. <laughs> I have had shit luck the entire session. Five. Uh, five. Mm. God damn zoom. Okay. Ooh, it's a new mission. All right. Give me some more night speaker missions. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And please, like, give me suggestions or, like, if you specifically want to go out and work for a, a specific faction, uh, please just tell me and I can definitely make that happen. Well, I, so, I definitely want to get in with the night speakers. Think tanks. All right. I, so I tell you what I want to do. I want to go to a gambling den, take a lot of drugs, have a good time. Lose. Hand out here. On the right side. So those are acquire assets, craft. As a result of five. Yep. So you um, meditate, and uh, you use your. Uh, Vice is gambling, correct? Yes. So I'm going to piss away a lot of time and probably one of my credits. I'm going to intentionally lose a load of poker to you. 
but I'm going to lose a load of poker to you to keep you there. Um, all right. Fine. Oh, so you roll your lowest of inside prowess or resolve. Got a five. This is good because I have six stress. That that is great. So yeah, and you're going to get a credit off me, Viper. And nice. for the other one, can I use lay low? Yes. So lay low reduces the heat and the wanted level. There's only heat in the system. Um, mm -hmm. In a system you're not in. Okay, so you can you're in the Brex system, and. Um, uh, Where else gonna, have we got heat? I've just shared the factions and heat uh, thing to everyone. So please. Take one, guys. Yeah, so to, to give you an idea, uh, the IOTA system is where we brought the, um, uh, the Emerald Tart artifact. You haven't done anything else in that system, aside from staying there and talking big. Uh, and then the um, Rin system is where we did the previous job. So that's where Aleph is, that's where we kidnapped the magistrate, and that's where the governor is. Uh, I'd suggest so, go for Ren, because that's got the highest. Yeah. So we pick Ren, and yeah, then... Yeah, reduce heat in Ren. So roll an action... Yeah, uh, sorry. Uh, say how you get the hegemony off your back and roll an action. Okay, so what does Mushisa do to uh, mitigate this? So, uh, hmm, I'm thinking I'm going to be writing to that woman who we arranged for the kidnapping mm -hmm. of. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to be like staying in contact with her and sort of putting it more in contact context what's happened to her. And as yep. a result, she's like very slowly nudging things so that we're no longer of concern. Mm-hmm. Or at least she's not as mad. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. As a result, she's not going to direct yeah. resources your way. All right. So, yeah. So you roll an action. Um, I, I, I'm loving imagining you writing that letter. Look, the other guys want. A is it consort? I was going to say it'll be sway or consort. I've got the same in either of either yeah. of them. It's one dice. Yeah. Good. It's a five. Mm. Okay. So we reduce it by two. Uh, yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah. It's the uh, wanted. Okay, so so as a standard, like we don't even need to roll because you don't have wanted levels yet. So it's just reduced to heat. Good. So Rin is reduced by two. There we go. Good. Okay. So that is our downtime. Now all we need to do is stay out the Brack system for about like three get three missions. <laughs> uh, then we do the XP. So take a look. Look at your sheet at the bottom. There's the. Um, oh, and clear your if you had, uh, like, your things filled. Uh, clear them because I know that we uh, leveled up last time. A bunch of us, anyway. I think everyone did. No, so. I didn't. I didn't level up my 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 playbook. Oh yeah. Right. Okay. So um, I'll, I'm almost at my prowess next level. Good. I did a bunch of desperate. At least, at least, at least three of them today. Yeah. So for your uh, XP that can be allocated either to your playbook. Well, actually, no. I'm an, I reckon I only get one for struggling with issues from vice or traumas. Sweet. And you can and you can choose with speed and flair. Yeah. Did I do it more than once? Yeah. Uh, you uh, you definitely did, in my opinion. Yeah. Tough challenge with wisdom all the way. Yeah, definitely. Okay, all right, so uh, multiple times. So I'll say I put one in prowess to get the upgrade, and then one in here the playbook. Right. So I've filled up my resolve. Okay, good. So you can uh, empty that, and then you can put down one extra dot to your the uh, skills under resolve. Stick in a tune, why not? Stars, you mean to go on? 
Does that bring you to three or four? Three. So uh, I believe by keeping Viper in the ship, I did the right thing at the cost to myself by handing over that credit to yeah. him. Yeah. That'll be an XP for me then from my uh, crashing the statues. Yeah, yeah. But Definitely. taking all the books and stuff. Yep. So can I wangle two more out of that? 